Hello, hello. Uh, welcome to a different video. Uh, my name is Brandon Wheeler. I am now back at home from uh, <laughs> my military stuff being done. I'm still trying to get this room together and everything. I got a lot to, I got a lot to do. So that's going to be a continual thing. Uh, but I'm going to be playing a little escape room in a box. Now I actually got one, of, got this uh, last year, or last Christmas. <laughs> But, because it, I found out, like, oh, I'm going to be going on deployment, kind of last second. I'm like, oh, well, I don't want to bring that, so we're going to be playing it today. So this may go very well, or may go very terribly. I actually got one of these for my mom, and she didn't really end up wanting to play it, but that's fine. This one is by Exit, is Exit the Game, The Professor's Last Riddle. That's what we plan today. Let's read what the uh, back says, so I can give you an introduction. Still reeling from the news of your favorite archaeology professor's passing, you have been enlisted in a rather peculiar assignment. It seems that instead of a will, he's left you an envelope with some postcards and a series of clues. Grab your passports. You're about to embark. Oh, grab your passports. You're about to embark on a global treasure hunt. Can you solve the riddles and uncover the mystery of the professor's legacy? Hmm. Well, let's find out. If you're wondering why I have a straw in my mouth, it's because I have a uh, speech issue that I gained from the military um, when I was there. I had like heat stroke or something happened to me, and ever since then I can't talk normal unless I'm biting down on a straw. So, if like this, how with that? So, biting down something helps. Okay, so I have this thing. It says stop. Do not open this envelope till the game tells you to. I'm gonna put that to the side. I don't want to use the box because the thing is with the box is that the box actually can be part of the game. <laughs> I remember that from the other one. Oop, oh gosh. All right. Mm. Alright, I got a bunch of thingamajigs and everything. Alright, you are not allowed to look close at the game materials before starting the game. Do not open the strange eyes and do not look at the front side of the cards. Wait until the game starts and tell you you're allowed to do. What's this game about? Oh, more introduction. More backstory. Of course, escaper. <laughs> or mystery, actually. Diana Brixton, a colleague of esteemed Professor Ian Jaha. Johannesson has asked you to meet with her. You are among his most trusted students. Have once reached, rushed to his aid to free him from an ancient temple. Sadly, the renowned archaeologist has passed away, leaving behind... Well, nobody's quite sure exactly. Thank you all for coming. As you know, the professor is a very mysterious individual, brilliant, adventurous, and cunning. He loved a good mystery, and as such, communicated his most important information in riddles, ensuring that they can only be deciphered by those who regarded it as worthy. So I either lift up one genre or whatever. I think the details of his estate was what I believed to be an extremely valuable treasure. Uh, valuable treasure, yeah. Are sealed within a safe, and of course it appears we would need to solve his riddles in order to unlock the safe. Inside the envelope labeled my last riddle, I found a peculiar disc, a map, and instructions in the postcards from his most recent trip. This is why I've gathered you here. I unfortunately have never been patient enough to have much headway in with his riddles, and therefore. I'm coming here, shoot resourcefulness to help me decipher the professor so we can open the safe and discover his most valuable treasure of all. Cool. Helper app. Oh, yeah, sure, I can do the helper app. Alright, all the game materials and everything. Cool. Let's go sorting. I'm gonna put a decipher wheel. And this thing here, I don't know what this is. Door thing. Okay. Read the rule book to get out of that. Follow all his instructions. I'm trying to. Okay, where do I start? Okay, world map and six postcards. I can look at the world map and six postcards. Fantastic. There's balloons in here. <laughs> I got for the materials is two balloons. Well, and okay. Is there something underneath of this? No. But inside the box, how it looks is a. Uh, I know, can't. You got like kind of a train station thing. There's maps kind of on the sides with a train station entrance right there. You got uh, some countries in the box. This is in the uh, Caribbean, it seems. Bali, Capri, Crete. Oh, no, it's not the Caribbean. Crete is an island off Italy in Sicily. Oh, okay. Jamaica, Maldives. Alrighty. I guess we're timing this or whatever now. 
about five minutes in. Just so thinking. Open this. Real exciting, isn't it? Me struggling with scissors. How do we know the professor's dead? Maybe he's not actually dead. Just a thought. Of course, I don't know of anything but these things. There. Okay. These are all the uh, deck cards you need. Riddle cards, stuff like that. That will be useful for a lot of things. They got help cards, answer cards, and riddle cards. And like these other advertisement things at the bottom, which is fine. But, all right, so six postcards in the world map. Is this a postcard? That's stickers. All right. all right, so we have a world map. That's the map. Oh, hang on. And on the back is a type of thing. Uh, it says, everything is green on the blue planet. And this is the front. All the map stuff. And it starts with little card J. Okay. Now, sightseeing. These are the cards. Ah, okay. Yeah, these are the cards. Alright, so these are all the different cards. There's one... To Maldives, England, Paris. They all have different names on them on the back and everything. Let me go to the card J and let's find out what we're doing here. Riddle card J. F G H I J. Riddle me this, Cape Crusaders. Alright, Riddle card J. Miss Brixton leads you to her partner's safe. How? His will's inside here. I'd be very grateful if you could help. Open the safe to me into this dice. Don't know the combination. Ian always, has had, Ian always had a way of making a secret out of everything. Did you see the cryptic single note stuck to the safe door? I can't make heads or tails of any of this. If, he didn't, if I didn't miss him so much, I'd be cursing his memory. His memory. Now, can you help me? What do you see? He paused for a moment and reached for the note on the door. Riddle card N. Discard the card to the side. Alright, riddle card N. Riddle card N. Striking and mysterious pictures. Okay. Striking and mysterious pictures. Okay, I already see what this is. If you look closely, you see a moon and you have three images. You have an iguana, or like a, some sort of lizard, a taxi, and the Japanese like arch thing. Now, the thing that stands out, look at the first letters here. The ST is capitalized. S-T-A-M-P, stamp. Which means we have to go to the stamp on one of these. But which one is the question. Okay. Uh, well, I see three of them. All right. There's a white flag and three of them. Okay. Those three stamps match uh, this one, this one, and this one according to the back. Now, because it listed the iguana first, I'll read the iguana one first, and that is the Galapagos Islands. Different creatures. Reading from the Galapagos Islands, by the way, I have spoken with Mike. He is now managing my assets. Don't worry about me. My credit card is working again. So I was able to take care of all the necessary arrangements. I'm off again. The next expedition has already been planned. Later, Ian. Okay. Then the taxi, which is the New York one. Okay. Dan, I haven't been able to reach you. Is your telephone not working? Please contact me as soon as you get this postcard. I see that you have my credit card blocked. Why did you do that? Until later. Ian. And then now, Tokyo on Arch. Deanna, I'm in Tokyo now. Can't come home just yet. I'll be traveling for another couple months. Have you heard anything from Ben? He seems to disappear just after our meeting in Paris. Until then, Ian. Okay, so. I have these three things. Five one six four three. Five one six four three. The uh, address of the day Anna Bergson is seven Hoffenstrasse Kunstwerft, Germany. What Deutschland? Five one six four three. Tokyo Airplane Galapagos Airmail five three seven one four. And then New York. Question is, what am I to do with that stamp? 
Well, the only stamp that matters here is the Galapagos one that has 53714. See, on the Galapagos uh, thing. But what am I supposed to do with that? I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out how he goes from Galapagos to New York, all the way to Japan over here. So, I'm trying to see. You know, like two options go like through Moscow. Sightseeing, just says sightseeing. Doesn't say where it's from. Okay, the first stamp up here, if I had to look at it, it's kind of smudged and it's got a palm tree. Hmm. And the other ones, going down, uh, this one specifically says Great Britain. So I know he said Great Britain on that one. One at the bottom is Paris. So I know Paris, London. I might need to get a hint. Now part of these cards are all hint cards, which are useful for figuring out what the heck I'm supposed to be doing, because I don't know. But I did have a moon. It did show me the moon. Actually, that might be what I'm supposed to be. There's a decipher wheel here, and on the back says discover. But on that you match the um, colors of the moon, or the colors or whatever, with the item. And there's a moon here, so the stamps were uh, lizard, taxi cab, and thanks. So let me look at the colors. Blue, white, red. Now if we line it up on this, it should be... Let's see, so blue, white, gives me 531... Okay, yeah. I get the numbers and then that number, then the blue number it shows is the answer card. So, 531. Let us go rummaging through the answer cards. For card number 23. I guess I should separate them because I didn't do that. Okay. Let's separate them with a lock I never used. These are the help cards. Leave those over there. All right, answer card, 23. Answer card, 23. Wait, what? The code may be right. Where can you see the code symbol? This wasn't it. <laughs> I don't think... Oh, wait, here we go. Um, it shows the box on it, the safe, and that is answer card four. I thought that was like the wrong card. Okay, answer card four. The safe springs open. Hey, I did it without a help card. Cool. All right, so this is done to the side. The safe springs open. Great, exclaims Miss Bergson. She pulls out a little box and a few flight tickets along with cryptic slightly signed note that reads as follows my lawyer has the will he will open it when someone brings him my most valuable jewel that i lost on one of my trips my first trip was a round trip my jewel didn't actually disappear on that voyage but it, is, it was then that i got to know my friend ben who you can who you can tell more solve the riddle of my trip and you learn how to find ben you find cards b c m and w take these cards in the stack and look at them all right so that's the case b C, M, W. M is kind of an inverse thing to W, so... Alright, let's start from the beginning. Alright. Let's... B. A round trip with side roots. This is it. Follow me along in your thoughts so that we can try to get this box open. The starting point and the goal, by the way, are Mon et Mor. That's French. Or Spanish. French or Spanish. Measured against other riddles, getting the code will be completely easy. It will only fall into place, though you keep your thoughts at an intellectual height rather than simply going postal postcards. So height and postcards. You will soon bend this riddle to your will. Then select the fourth and first legs of the trip. Okay. So... Well, let me look at the other cards first. It's boarding passes. 
All right, this is what it looks like. It says Mon Amour, or Mon Amour, which I think is French, like my love or so. The thing that's interesting is that certain words are italicized. Measured, height, postal, and bend, and Mon Amour. So, and then select the fourth, first, and third. Fourth, fir the first, first, and third. So, fourth, first, third. And then we have the tickets. Uh, okay. So we have three different tickets to what is what. Let me just show them at the same time. All right, ticket C, let me call that. Professor Johnson from Toronto to Giza, then Cape Town to Sydney. All right, ticket W, then Giza to Rio de Janeiro, and then Sydney to Paris. And then finally, uh, Paris to Toronto, Rio de Janeiro to Cape Town. So I gotta, from these, figure out where he went first. So, one more. I think Paris, all right, so Sydney to Paris, and then Paris to Toronto. All right, so I gotta put these in order, I believe. So, I gotta write down what it is I'm doing. It says I can write on them, but I'm trying not to write on them. I have a little piece of paper here so I can write. So, first one that he doesn't appear at anywhere. He went from Cape Town to Sydney. And then Sydney to Paris. Then Paris to Toronto. Then Toronto to Giza. Then Giza to Rio de Janeiro. Just Rio de Rio de Janeiro. Okay, we got it. Rio de Janeiro. But Rio de Janeiro he used to get to Cape Town. It's a cycle. <laughs> Alright, is there anything on here that only appears once? Paris. Twice. Toronto. Twice. Because Toronto goes to Giza. Rio de Janeiro. Yes, twice. Cape Town twice. Giza twice. Sydney twice. Paris. Sydney to Paris. Okay, so I got to figure out where he went from the height. Measured the height and postal. Okay, let me look at. Measure the height. Oh, well, here we have my love, the French uh, calendar. So it says choose their fourth, first, and third legs. So fourth, it's 324 meters. As you can see, it's got different measure readings on the side. I'm sorry, my camera is not the greatest, but it's what I deal with. All right, see so kind of from the top going all the way down. Height above sea level, 33.35 meters. So that's what we got to work with. Okay, so 324 meters. Then the first platform is 57.64 meters and then the third legs third has so many <laughs> well that's interesting if you look at this I don't know if you can tell but the uh, you see certain numbers are bolded like 256.54239.54069. I wonder why that's a thing. On the third because in the third platform I don't know what it says bend. Where you would bend it. Um let me see what this one says, even the French one. Deanna, I met Ben. He sends us his best regards. He's on the trail of some kind of strange cult. Of course. 
Something in the catacombs of Paris. If only I had more time, I go to accompany him next week into the Parisian underworld. Is everything okay over there? I haven't heard from you in a little while. Until then, Ian. Well, you're jumping all around the place, dude. What do you expect? <laughs> okay. So, you assume bend this riddle to your will. Then select the fourth first. Alright, so bend the riddle. Okay. There is a Y symbol. So I know the symbol. Symbol on the box is the curvy Y thing at the bottom there. Which I do have. Okay. So I gotta figure out what to do from that. It says bend this riddle. A round trip with side roots. Oh, I know what this is. I gotta, I think, bend it over this. Or something. What does it go with? Because I remember there was this other one where you had to kind of do the sides or whatever. I should replay that because I never really beat it per se. Uh, bend it over your will. Part. It doesn't have any dates on it. Well, hang on. Cape Town to Sydney. Duh. And then Sydney goes all the way to Paris. And then Paris to Toronto. I think I have to kind of try to guess. Playing guesses here. I have to kind of kind of guess the <laughs> like root stuff between everything. So the fourth four flag is see, one, two, three, four. Rio de Janeiro to Cape Town. So Rio de Janeiro. Where is that? I have to kind of like measure it using this. You have to kind of measure it using the map. Alright, so... I kind of got... Am I using the distance between them? I think I have to do the distance. So, the distance between Rio de Janeiro and Cape Town... Because if you see, it kind of matches on the side. You get these little squigglies and everything in the distance. So I got to kind of measure the distance between them. Okay, so what? If I add all these together, I'll get something. 171, 38, 131, 05, 501, 33. What if I do a 501? So 5, 0, 1, 28. Let's find out. Card number 28. The code might be right. Where can you see the code symbol? Number 12. Let's find out. Unfortunately, incorrect. When nobody can console yourself, I guess it's pretty yes. It's a nice way to find the answer. It's not the correct code. Okay, so it's not 501. Fourth, first, and third legs. So to try to look at which is the first and things of each one, we have a five of that trip. Second one, the fourth number would be zero. And then the third was the six. Because again, the numbers are bolded here on the side. So if I chose like between those two, which is the fir fourth, first, and third numbers, I would get out of those uh, things written down, cross. That kind of what I did here. Of course, doing a little math, but I underlined which ones were the bolded numbers. It would give me 506. Which would give me the card 12. 
Which one was that one that I did the answer card to? So that's not it either. Okay, that's not the right answer. <laughs> okay, so I am kind of stuck. That's bad. So unless he started somewhere else. Because Mia Moore is France. I'm going to have to use my first help card. Now, for the help cards, what you have to do is you find... They all have these symbols. Try not to look at it. On them, that it matches what's on the discs. So you got to find those symbols and go from there. Okay, I have found the symbol. And here's the first clue. To be able to solve this riddle, you need to have found the riddle cards B, C, M, and W. Oh yeah, that was in the instructions. If you don't have these yet, you have to first solve a different route. Yeah. You also need the world map and the Paris postcard. I did that. Our round trip is evolved here, as card B tells you. You can use the flight tickets on card C, M, and W to arrange a perfect round trip with me and more. According to the postcard, that means Paris. From there, proceed to Toronto, Giza, Rio de Janeiro, Cape Town, and Sydney, and finally back to Paris. Yes. <laughs> I did that. So, yeah, so Paris, Toronto, yeah, I, I did that. What's, what's the issue? Okay, second help card. Second card? Take a look, closer look at card B. In addition to the word postal, which refers to postcard, you notice the measured height flight bend. Yes, I did that. The flight connections printed on the world map will have the shape of an arch. If you only knew how long the four first and the first legs of the hand trip, the height indicates you read the height of the tower on the postcard for Paris may help. Wait, I have to bend it? Huh? Yeah, I do know the bend thing was... The flight connections printed on the world map have the shape of an arch. Okay, so I have to kind of bend the points. Oh, wait, that might be what I did wrong. See, on the bottom here, there's an X. What does that X look like? Like, um, right bottom. There's an X there. At the bottom of these maps, this just fell to the floor and I don't know where. On these maps, that X looks very familiar, like super same thing as these other ones. Okay, so I probably have to start at the bottom. I was measuring from here, like at the base of the first platform, because I was thinking one, two, three. I have to start from the X's. Okay, remath. <laughs> All right, I'll give it a shot. It's okay if it's wrong. At Rio de Janeiro to Cape Town. There's the X. All right, the third. This is the third leg, and it's giving me the seven. Because it's at 137.51, and that number that's bolded is seven. Okay, next was the first, Paris to Toronto. That was the seven. Oh, I did that wrong. Rio de Janeiro to Cape Town. What's the fourth trip? 187 or 197. Let's try it. It's giving me the card one. No. Okay. How about 197? Answer card eight. Okay, it might be right. Uh, number three. No. <sighs> kind of stumped. Okay, so I'm going to have to get... Solution? I don't want... No, there's got to be another way of doing this. Later. Okay, I've exhausted my resources. I am confused. Help card solution to the first thing, to this symbol. According to card B, four first and third trips and the ones that matter. 
Four flags of one between Visionary and Cape Town. Position this Paris card on the curved line of this route in such a way that the X at the base of the Eiffel Tower is placed in the X of the Rio. Yes, I did that. Okay. Then you'll be able to read the height of 168. Okay, let me hold off. Let me try to do it on my own. Okay. Maybe that's what I need to do. Oh, gosh. Alright, so... So, bend it like this. 168.5. Yeah, I got that. So, Regionary to Cape Town is an 8. Okay. Oh, I was putting them in the wrong order. I was doing the... Okay, hang on. <laughs> I was putting the fourth one second in the first. That's 8. Okay. That's fact. Eight. Then Paris to Toronto. That's probably the one I need to bend the most. Eight, nine. Okay, so eight nine, eight nine seven. Let's try that one. Do 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 do. Number eight. Wait, I think I did that, and that still gave me the wrong answer. Okay, then Cape Town to Sydney. No, wait, third Visionary to Cape Town. Okay. Third is last. Okay, 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 okay. So nine, eight. I keep doing Rio Janeiro to Cape Town. Rio Janeiro to Cape Town is the third. Cape Town to Sydney, which is the fourth, is the one that needs to be first. Okay. No. Okay, that didn't go well at all. So. All right. Paris to Toronto. And third leg is Giza to Rio. So I was just doing the entire thing wrong. Rio Janeiro to Cape... No, because Paris to Toronto, Giza... Okay. Giza to Rio. So, I did that way then. So the third leg is Giza to Rio, not Rio Janeiro to Cape Town. Okay, I misdid my list. I think I wrote it right, I just didn't do it right. 17. Okay. 17, 17. Yay! Okay, so the answer to that is 890. Alright, I'll count that as I use these up. So, as I did. Alrighty, so. Put that to the side. I can put all these to the side, I think. All these answer cards. And all that junk. Cool. Alright, help card set. Cool. Alright, number 17. You were able to solve the riddle around Professor's roundabout trip. The wooden box springs up inside to find an old metal sign. A few photos of Koi in an address for Ben. Without any wasting time, you set off to Europe to find him. You find riddle cards KPY and take him out to look. Alright, so KPY. Caution, Our Lady Liberty is now being overhauled for you from top, bottom to top. Bottom to top. Talisize, bottom to top. Do the renovation work. The view of Manhattan from the Crown is currently blocked. Please do not be disappointed. You can still find breathtaking views over New York from the Empire State Building, Rockefeller Center, or the One World Trade Center. One World Trade Center. Oh, this thing was from years ago, not the current day. Oh, crap. So. Views from everything else. Bottom. Ah, everything's falling apart. Bottom top. We thank you for your understanding. Got it. Okay, the curtain. Koi fish. Koi fish, koi fish. Does everyone like koi fish? Alright, the koi fish had these Japanese symbols on them. I don't know if it's supposed to be this way or that way. I suppose this way. But you see, one goes left, one goes right. Now those lily pads are something. Alright, you managed to track down Ben. He is an old acquaintance of the professor and after lengthy illness has been working for a while as a cashier at the Paris Catacombs. 
He greets you for his ticket booth. It's about time. I'm expecting you. You have to open this box. Now here, though. You have to travel to a different tourist attraction far away from here. The lady you're looking for is sure to help you solve the riddle. Okay, Lady Liberty. Um, you smile at him, grab the iron box and book next to plane tickets. And the next plane tickets. You are about to go. Ben calls after you. The boards. Don't forget the boards. With these words, you press a stick of boards into your hands to finally let you go. Laughing, you shake your head and add oversized luggage to your flight. Now take the nine strange board items. Nine strange board items. The boards. What do they do with the boards? Boards. 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 Oh, boards. I still got these stinking balloons. <laughs> I still don't know what to do with that. All right, boards. These are the board items. Okay, Fusroda. Now, Lady Liberty. Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. I guess I just need to cut these all apart in order to do this. Or maybe not. I need to do it for this. Just need to. All right, now, I noticed this, the height differences immediately from, you know, everything. So, basically, I think I have to uh, put them all together or take them apart or something. Now, they can come apart, so I'm going to... Now, on the back of these things, they have a bunch of... Uh, Thingamajigs. They have these preparations of things here at the bottom, but I don't know. I'm guessing a type of order, but see on the bottom of these boards in the picture, it says nothing point nine or nine point two one blank blank four five zero. That's very curious indeed. And then the one side. Some of them have this purple, but on the other side it has nothing. Now it's got a cross section, like you're supposed to stick something through it. Like maybe... Yeah, I guess I should read the New York postcard. That would be helpful more, probably. All right, New York postcard, what's it say? I haven't been able to reach it. Is working? Oh, okay, yeah, I've read that one before. Never mind. Trying to set it up. Okay. Set up right there in front of me. Oh, okay. So here you have the arrow with the thing, and I have an arrow on this side. So that means that this slides through. Okay, I got it. So it's interlinked in the middle like an X. So is it kind of like a mobile? Is that what I'm doing? Okay, and then what do I do with the middle here? I mean, it's not like I'm stuck with anything. Oh, it's probably like the zero, this hole here, because what does it say? Uh, where's that first card? Our Lady Liberty is being overhauled from bottom to top. Okay, bottom to top. Okay. The renovation work, the view of Manhattan from the crown is currently blocked. Please do not be disappointed. You can still find everything. Okay, from bottom to top. And I just noticed at the bottom of the Statue of Liberty are like plus and minus signs. So we got to do plus or minus signs. All right, this one I think I'm going to need a hint. So the hint for this is the star. Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana. Right, the star. First clue. To be able to solve this riddle, you need to have found the riddle cards came. Well, yes, nine trade board times. Lady of Liberty. Mm-hmm. The screws already attached. Strange. That doesn't really share with me anything. Okay. Nine board is intended to block your view of New York. What you see the city is shown in the postcard. Nine scrapers of various heights. Alright. What you should do is clear, but what other side of the board should you use? The bottom of the Statue of Liberty might be helpful there. Do you see the symbols? Those are the screw types, not mathematical signs. The screw types. Okay. I did something wrong. <laughs> this is the boards with the screw types, not 
that thing. That thing is for later. Okay, let's punch out all these boards. Well, at least I know I need to use that later on. <laughs> I just grabbed the first thing I uh, wanted to have. So the bottom of the Statue of Liberty is the boards that kind of what order they all go in. Alrighty, so. And the bottom of this is what it's saying, like, for each board, kind of like on the bottom, like X minus Y is the board. Because each of these boards have like this, like plus plus or minus minus, stuff like that. So I got to figure out which one goes over which board and everything like that. Got it. Okay. Okay, no, so it is just one board per thing, because I was thinking I had to add it, because I counted the pluses and minuses, and it's all the same. So, there's only one that goes there, that's plus. A few moments later. Okay, so each one, lining up the boards, this picture of uh, the Statue of Liberty here, like, that's what I had to do. Like, you know, they match height-wise and everything. So you can see, I'm getting the combination of 264 for the star. Let's find out if that's real. Twenty-one. See what the answer card says. This is the star number six. Hey, I did it! <laughs> Alright, so you're standing on the viewing platform of the Statue of Liberty. Look at the boards with the stone in the view of Manhattan. The code is correct, and Ben's iron box springs open inside. You find a small wooden chest. A few more pictures require a receipt and more signed, signed notes. You find riddle cards F H O X. Okay, I'm gonna put these guys all into the box. That way I don't lose them. Because I don't want to lose everything, because I have someone. You know, replay this or whatever. All right, so F H O X. I could put these to the side. So K P Y. So now we have F H O X. Now F. I'll get to it. Same with that one. Now on the X and H cards, it's showing more Kwai. Now that thing with the lily pad, the postcard. I think that's what this is going to relate to. Probably the directions of how everything is, most likely. Okay. Uh, for Dick, now F it shows this Mustaf, must must stars cafe. For decades we have renamed, remained true to our lineage and brought color to your gloomy day. Customer receipt, January tenth, two thousand fifteen. Or if this is English, and the uh, other places of the world, it's October first, two thousand fifteen. Espresso Delphia water still. Total tax, 875, payment received, $10, change, $1.25. London. Okay, so that means this is October 1st, because London, the English, they do day, month, year. Whereas us Americans, we do month, day, year. I prefer that, but it doesn't matter. It's just a cultural difference. And show me the L symbol. So, now, the highlighted words of this are lineage and color. So, lineage and color will be useful. Sightseeing made easy. If you want to open this wooden chest, all you have to do is unfold your creative... Unfold. Your creative wings and follow the instructions below. Take a look at your work. Find it and enter the code below from top to bottom. I might need to do this British... The only other one I see is this British one. Now, I have two different things with color. Sightseeing made easy. I have this one with the Galapagos that has a bunch of color. I mean, that's possible. But I also have this London thing. All right, unfold your creative wings and follow the instructions below. Okay, so I think if it is indeed I'm going with the British, that is what I'm going to have to do. Do they call these, did they call these in London like Lineage or something. It's not a term I'm familiar with. But what it is showing is colors. 
Now let me see if they match these colors in the thing or if they have to go with that other one. I see a blue to red. Okay, let me get the help card. I know using the help cards suck, but I'm kind of at an impasse of knowing like what the heck am I supposed to do? Okay. First clue for the L symbol. If you ever solve this really you need to have a, yes. Wait. What? Did I read the right? I thought I had to grab F H O X. F H O X. Find rid of cards F H O X. I don't know if I've passed over something or what, but it says I need the box, so I'm just gonna try it with the box. Ian told me he would come one day, he was really quite frequently busy as I worked at some point. I don't know. We've become forever I'm going to miss him and the exciting stories about his adventures and discoveries. He asked me to give you this briefcase. My favorite cafe. I still don't understand how I got the U. those in the bottom of the box okay so I have the platform here which I've already seen this thing it's in the bottom of the box now then I have to your creative wings and then blue to red I don't even know where that would be there's no colors of anything to match Not exactly sure what that means. Okay, so second clue, because I am lost. Receipt Mazar tells you the lines, lineage. Yeah, that's what I thought. Lineage, lines, and colors of the underground are important here. By the way, the cafe where you drank his espresso at the stand from Brook Station, the station of the red line at the end of this route. You start at half Heathrow Airport at the bottom left of the underground map. Just two lines lead off from there. Orange and pink. So the first must have taken one of these lines. Which one did he use? There's no important clue when he changed trains. He lost his sunglasses. Card Q. From where he might... Where's the train traveling? Card Q. Card Q. So I can use card Q. So where do card Q? All right, safely at Terminal 5, taking the two now. Great, see you later in the cafe. What a pain. The lost one sending us the underground that must have slipped out of my pocket on the platform when I was changing trains. That's entertaining. Sorry, if you look close, that problem no shift. Okay. Find the sunglasses. Okay. So, find the sunglasses. I have found the sunglasses. They're over here. Sunglasses are here. Right there. So. Okay, so I have to look at this British map of confusion. <laughs> British map of confusion, and we're gonna go from there. So, Espresso Doppio. And where is it at? Stamford Brook. So we need to look for the Stamford Brook. Okay, I found it. Here's Stamford Brook. Right there, where my finger is, Stanford Brook. Okay. So we know we're at the Stanford Brook station. Where did he go? So he went from here to blue to red. Okay, here's blue to red. Stanford Brook, got it. So then I'm supposed to go backwards, is that it? train has Wimbledon and Edgware Road on the sides, so I'm guessing it's going towards Wimbledon? Where's Wimbledon? 
Okay, I see. So, according to the thing, this receipt is at the end of the route, at the end. So, he started the Heathrow Airport, bottom left of the underground map. Okay, but two lead off from there, orange and pink. So, which ones did he take? Okay, so, orange and pink. So, how did he get to the Stanford Station? So, I mean, he could have gone orange, because... Oh no, orange doesn't intersect with it once, but there's the station, but it only goes up and down. I don't think it goes. I guess orange? But it says at the end, so he could have gone. All right, I'm gonna have to just get a solution, unfortunately, because I don't understand. The box bottom is an underground station with lost sunglasses lying on the box benches. Pull the insert out of the box, yes. Are written on the front, yeah, Edward Roge and Wimbledon, Green Line. Oh, Edward Roge. Okay, yeah, I see Green Line. Okay. There isn't a platform showing that the train is coming from the edge of the road and going to Wimbledon, so the professor took the pink line from Heathrow. So he took the line from Heathrow. Trains come to Edgerow and going to Wimbledon. So first took the pink line from Heathrow Paddington and changed the trains where the green line in the direction of Wimbledon. At Earl's Court, he changed the red line and traveled to Stamford Brook. The code is 201. How do you get that? So, one, two. How did it become 201? Pink, green, red. Like, seriously, how did... Because that's the stations? Two... Zero one? I don't know where you get two from, but... Okay, that one was confusing. I still don't know why I have Q, which is... I, I don't know. Sometimes I'm just like, what's going on? Is there a misprint? Was I an idiot? Probably because I'm an idiot. <laughs> eight. Answer eight. And this box is the briefcase. It's number 10. All right, Lizzie's briefcase springs open. Alas, the hope jewel is not inside. Instead of two more sign messages from a professor, one yearning for the sun and sea. So you set off my train to solve your next riddle. Maybe one of the fishermen living there. You'll find cards A and L. Take them from the deck. Okay. So A, L. So hopefully I don't have to deal with that again because that's confusing as crap. <laughs> Alright, so AL is A. I. L. Why is A in lowercase? AL. Okay, the A has a bunch of grid coordinates. And L says when the red sun sets in the ocean over Capri, the solution will flash. Above Bali, Bonaire, and Crete, when the fishermen head to sea under the setting sun, you have the this ditty in your head when the day is done, la 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 la. When the run sets over Capri, the solution will flash. Okay, so we have Capri here on the box, because I knew that would be a box thing. Above Bally, Bonaire, and Crete, when the fishermen head the sea, under the setting sun, you will have this ditty in your head. Okay, so. Bali, Bonaire, and Crete. So, Croatia. When the fishermen head to sea under the sun, you still have this ditty under the setting sun. Okay. The thing will flash. Okay. Sightseeing? What, what thing am I looking for? The solution will flash. The solution will flash. 05, 04. Showing the globe. I wonder if it's the globe. Everything is green on the blue planet. Under the setting sun. The thing is, I don't have any connections 05 or anything like that. C9, S8. This is the diamond. First clue, diamond. To be able to sell this video, you need the found card L. Yes. You also need the game box. I did. There are some lyrics that you can read on card L. Try to interpret the lyrics later. The names of the four islands are mentioned here. Yes. 
Not on the world map, someplace else. They're on the box. I get that. Silly game. So, we have Corsicia. Because when the run sets in the ocean over Capri, the solution will flash, flash, flash. When the fishermen head to sea under the setting sun. So, so rises in the east, rises in the east, rises in the east, sets in the west. So, east, west. So, above Bali Concrete, solution will flash above Crete. Find the red sun like the island. Okay, speaking of seeing, the icon on the top of the left card. Oh, like that, like you have one eye closed. Really? Find the red sun like that. This is also in the game box. Then position the box so you can see the red sun above Capri. Okay. <laughs> Where is the red sun? The red sun, is it on the other side of the game box? Oh no, wait, here we go. Okay, so we had the red sun. The red sun's on the inside of the box. It's right there. So I have to kind of do... I see it over Capri. Then Crete has a brown sun. Bonaire has an orange sun. Ali has a... What the heck am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> Alright, let's take this back out. Because I don't think I need it right now. Alright, I see the sun over Capri. I see brown over Crete. I see pink over Bonaire. And Bali is black. So, the order was Bali, Bonaire, Crete. So... Bali is... It's either black or, or is there another red sun I'm supposed to be looking at? No. It's... There's Cap. Crete is brown for sure. Banera is pink. Bali is this black. Okay. So I started with Bali. Bali, Banera. So black, pink, brown. Oh gosh. Black, pink, brown for the diamond. Black, pink, brown. That's seven to six. And it gives me a number of 28. My eye hurts. And it matches the little padlock guy of nine. Yay! Goodness. In the harbor of Capri, a fisherman hands you a sardine can and looks at you deadly. Ian was a good guy. He told me that I could hand over a can if someone came and asked for it because if, man because if anyone managed to get here, they would have earned it. The worst is the way that you feel the presence of the jewel. If the lock springs open, you find clues about the next location where you're supposed to meet a diving instructor with a safeguarding case for the professor. G and T. Okay. Still don't know if I need that yet. So I'm going to put this over there. Wait, wrong one. I'm going to put this over there. I think I might have messed up something. Or maybe I got the answer to something I wasn't supposed to get the answer to yet. Okay, GT. I have no clue. Still I'm confused about that U thing. Alright, GT. T has more of those things. Alright, G. Time to hurry off to a new nice place and meet a man about a case. But instead of a lock and key to fit, you discover a riddle to open it. Discover the world. Those words matter more than any other past around chatter. Instead of mere guesses or empty threats, please think of terms of coordinates. Let's follow these steps carefully. Shade things in, and then you'll see the picture that will point the way. To the goal you need to find today, enter the code from left to right, and your colorful world helps you see the light. Your colorful world helps you see the light. Okay, so. Obviously, this guy. But the problem is... How do I know what to do? And I got a circle, so first clue. A, G, T. Yeah, I have a decoder disc, world map, and one of the postcards. 
So that was where you have to find discover the world. You'll find this phrase or something around. There's also mentioned the coordinates. Those are the card coordinates on cards A and T. Are they written in green and blue than they think? Ours definitely remind you of something. They do. So, but that doesn't tell me on what portion it is. And one of the one of the postcards. Sightseeing. No. O five C seven V three O seven on the blue planet. I'm guessing something to do with I have no idea, second clue. You will see discover where written on the back of the decoder disc. Oh. Oh okay. Pull that off. It's still not. Okay. But. Alright, let me. So. Alrighty. So I gotta basically. You take the decoder disc and you put it on the planet, line it up with the axis, and you decode from there. So. Let's begin. Shade things in. We'll see. Okay. I gotta shade things in from So what it is, I don't wanna do it because it's gonna screw it up. You have this and you have to kinda of shade him in or whatever in here, but I don't wanna do that because that would kinda of screw up everything, I think, unless I'm supposed to. Um is there a way I can make stickers or something? A few moments later. So you're basically trying to mark out the places where these coordinates are on each side. And then O3. Code also has something to do with colors that are found from left to right. Galapagos. I think it's the turtle. The yeah, three turtle. Orange, blue, red. I think. So let me see. Hopefully that worked. Alright, the little thing is two. Hey, got it. Number two, on a beach in the Galapagos Islands in a cabin for a change is not actually bad. You meet a diving instructor. He extends a yellow driving case towards you. The professor told me enthusiastic story of his great treasure when he got decided he was off to speak in German. I couldn't always understand him. Well then, let's hope the treasure is in, is in, in this case. He responds to you enter the code. The case opens with a scene of the treasure when you keep waiting a little longer. Inside the clues, you find a blue suitcase in Sydney. You find the riddles E and R. Take these cards on the stack and look at them. You also find a sheet of stickers. A sheet of stickers. Take that as well. Okay. E R. Okay. Good thing I didn't shade it in because I didn't want to you know, spoil the thing for the future. For if you want to know, I was using a lot of my acquired D and D dice that I have that I got from over when I was in Pol when I was stationed over the seas in Poland, as everything kind of falls on the ground. I got a two, by the way. The twenty dropped on a two, so. Considering my performance so far, this I consider that accurate. All right, Agzuntite. No, as Askezikite. Askezikanite. Azeganite. You know, I used to be kind of good at German when I was in high school, but I found out I'm not. <laughs> Years later, Askezinite. Askezink. It's German for excellence, whatever the word is. Got some new stickums for my suitcase. Of course, I looked through all my stuff one more time and find the new spots for them. Still thinking about the layout that I should use to stick them on. I'm thinking of some sort of picture grid. So put them in a the picture grid. There are no half measures. Everything is accounted for and in black. But of course, totally colorful. Sure, all according to personal taste and matter of perspective and so on. Okay. Code. Medium. Long. Short. Ah. And of course, there's things that give an answer. Okay. Translation table. It's all the things of German, uh, the colors. Green, grün, red, rot, pink, rosa, white, weiss, like weiss schnee, over there, weiss. <laughs> Edelweiss, Edelweiss. Yellow, gelb, blue, blau, brown, brown, black, schwarz, purple, lia, or lila. I'm not sure how they'd say that. Lila or lia? Lila? Lila? Purple? 
I thought I knew the old world for purple, but lila? Orange is orange, or something. Okay, but that doesn't tell me anything of what I'm supposed to be doing, so... First clue. You need to have found, you need to have found riddle A, B, E, G, L, N, R, T, and U. And the sheet of stickers. Card L tells you the stickers must be stickers on the case. The it seems to be particularly important. A fixed grid of pictures, no half measures, and something about them being in the back. I've already seen some half black things. A lot of these cards were burned along their edges, leaving black single marks. Ow. So I'm supposed to use this for the thing? So no half black measures. So all the cards that have these burnt black things have to have stickers on the back of them. Wonderful. Go through all the stickers I have. I mean, things I have so far, then. There's that one. 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 Okay. So all the cards I previously thought I used, I have to reuse. Okay, let's see what the second clue says in case. According to the card R, no half measures to be taken. There are halves to appear on the riddle cards, which you'll be able to combine the whole whose outlines are sure to look weird. You. Something doesn't one of them look like something like a boomerang? All you have to do is decide on the range of every grid and look at it. Oh, so they all these things kind of match. So all these burn marks and everything they have to kind of match. Well, I'm not going to be able to show you what I have, but that's kind of interesting. Where is it? Okay, so so basically these all these burn marks I got to match with. These things. The stickers, the wombat, platypus, Australia. <laughs> okay, so I'm basically doing a makeshift puzzle. Of course, I'm not going to use stickers because I want to save what I have. Okay, so let's find out how to do all of these. This is the alligator. I already know. This is the platypus. Alright, so alligator goes there. Mm hmm Later. If I have to go by colors, which I guess is what I have to do, it sticks all these cards together. A koala is medium. No. A crocodile would be medium, so green. Uh long. Alright, I fix the stickers directly over the... I grabbed this solution card. Now your picture grid is and look at the grid from behind. You'll see a crossword grid. Oh, if I flip it over. So it would give me... Oh, grot. Grot blau rot. So grot is... Oh, wait, grun. So green, red, blue. Yeah, okay. Green, red, blue. Alright. I have to put that to the side because I used it. So green, red, blue. Okay, because it showed me this purple box, which I have. I have a purple box. And it gave me... You find Professor's blue suitcase in a locker in the main Sydney train station. And it's much bigger than I expected. A trunk would be a more apt description. The diving instructor wrote down the locker number before you set off on your voyage across the Pacific. With bated breath, you open the case. The first thing you find is a letter. A small letter. Take the letter and open it. Oh, gosh. Did I solve it without going through everything? <laughs> um, how... I think that's the end. Something happened here, and it's not right. <laughs>
I'm sorry, this is the first time I've been doing this on the computer. Alright. You found riddle card O. If you do not have it yet, it will first solve a different riddle. I also need a world map and sightseeing postcard. Colors on the postcard have we found? Yes, I got it. Color dots and zero represent folding shirt. Given that the dots and the color remain in scoops and the ice cream with the sightseeing picture. Oh, sightseeing. Okay, so postcard. Postcard. Where's my postcards? Over there. That's what it relates to. Okay. Sightseeing. Postcard. All right, so blue to red. Okay, you folded the handiwork. It looks like two pyramids. There are also two pyramids and geese on the world map. Okay, so color is 137. So 137 for the square. I was wondering, like, what the crap? Why wasn't, how did I get through everything? 137, 18. Eighteen. Silly box. Sixteen. Egypt. The pyramids. Of course, the professor will be here. What better place would be archaeologists to spend his time in the Valley of Kings? When just springs open. One last three. What the very said next. Scribe is the thing to Tokyo. The koi fish. Yay. D I Z. There we go. I was wondering, it's like, where the crap are these things? More koi fish. Okay, so. There's the koi fish. There we go. And then D. That is the the flower says nothing, yet the flower says a lot with the Pac-Man symbol. So I'm guessing with the koi fish that I send them all up with everything. And then I'm gonna need that thing with Jake. Okay. Put these all to the side. Okay, so if I had to guess from the uh, descriptions of everything, like start up here and then it just goes like right, because this is showing like the lily pad with an indentation pointing left and the arrows course left. So from that point of view, it'd be here and here and to this guy back up. Uh, it's just going around in circles. So that's not gonna work. Unless that's spelling me a number. That would be a start here, kind of like a B, a D. That's like a D, or it's a four. No, it's not a four either. I don't know what that is. Okay, triangle. First clue. P H Z. Don't need that. I also need Tokyo postcard. Yes, I got that. Saying finding the weather related, this is exactly what you find in the pond of the postcard from Japan. The pond is divided in 50 squares, which are exactly the same size as the pond design cars in DHIPX. Those are the pond designs you also find the Japanese character shown in the pond. Use a pair of scissors to cut the squares tokens and place them on the pond as they need to swim. Oh. I don't want to cut them all out. Okay, but let's see. Make sure there are matching Japanese characters on lying on top of each other. Now you have to do is correctly interpret the picture of the flower on card Z. Then you know how to move the tokens in, the, in this pond, namely from square to square. Always in the direction indicated by the arrow. Start with the empty square. Which token should move there? What should be the next one? I don't know if it's to look at anything. Look at the whole picture. Okay. But then I have to cut them out, and I'm trying not to do that with these cards. I'm trying to save everything. All right. Let's figure out a way, and let's get to it. Okay. Well, it is in the Koi Pond, telling you the direction in which these Jason Pond will not talk about some minutes. Pay attention to each notch in the water. Move each to token in turn until you see the white water or lily flag. Then you'll see how the Koi forms number of the pond. So these are going to A, B, and C. 662. The triangle, 6. Okay, so I'm kind of just trying to solve each puzzle. That way I know what I'm doing here because I'm just keep messing up. But, all right. And then you have these here. But the question is, how do I even get to them? The thing that was given me for the triangle, number 27, was... Um, was Q. 
and U. But how do I get S and V? Which one shows S and V? I wonder if it's in the envelope? Okay, what happens if I open the envelope? Okay, good. That means S and V still think. All right. Dear students, if you're reading this, it means I am no longer with you, that everything is going exactly the way I anticipated. I had no doubt that Deanna would exponentially bounce back from mourning and Tesco with finding my missing treasure so the lawyer could open the will and transfer all of my possession to her. Just as she was always siphoning off of me in life, I had no question that she would do the same upon my passing. Okay, so the lawyer was siphoning. I'm so happy that you have gotten this far as I knew that Deanna never were interested in solving riddles and failing to understand my passion for them would never be able to decipher my clues. I'm sure you're wondering what side of treasure is in the store, a chest of jewels, Richard's well. It's more strong than that, and you'd be surprised to know it is something that I haven't yet found. I know where it's located, but I've never had the pleasure of seeing it in person. I originally intended to complete the last leg of my trip via a hot air balloon. Oh, so that's what that's for. Uh, finally put it within the arms of each, but I can close to find I couldn't bring myself to complete the journey. I was too afraid of it, so other exploits took precedence, always assuring myself that finding it would be my next adventure. That would always be brave enough, but alas, since you are reading this letter, it's clear that I put far far too long to miss my opportunity, which is more reason for me to hope that you will be successful. In my suitcase, you find the folded up hair balloon. Uh, if you can decipher the code and balloon, you will take safely to the destination, and there you will find my treasure. The treasure, by the way, is named Gemma. She is my daughter. Aw. And I met her mother, Justine, during one of my lectures at Cambridge. Our relationship was short-lived, only lasting a few weeks after which life continued on and we lost track of each other. I didn't come to find out that I was a father until shortly after Justine's death, from a letter she sent her from her deathbed. I think I was too afraid that I might be rejected or that my heart might be broken, so I never made contact. Never told Deanna about the letter or that I was trying to find Gemma, or Gemma, as she would have done everything in her power to ensure that nothing would come between her greedy hands and my estate. Gemma would not have been safe if Deanna knew of her, so I went to the ends of the earth to conceal all evidence of her in the form of riddles and codes, hoping that only my cleverest, cleverest, cleverest protégés could understand the one I was planning. And now it all rests on you. Please find my Mr. Trisha, my legacy, my daughter Gemma, and connect her with my estate lawyer. Thank you and farewell, Ian Johansson. Plus, you may have fun. Now take rid of S and V from the strange trips. Okay. Okay. I was wondering, I was like, where am I going wrong? <laughs> I was like, where do I do S and V? Alright, now take the balloon off and off you soar to find the jewel you're looking for. Please be careful and follow all of this, then enter the code into the disc. The white stars are what you need what you should see, then look at the arrows and slit sub subsequently. Push the arrow into the slit and find the pink circle in the middle of it. The round picture holes at the very end will help you line things up. And when the lighter sides are what they hide, or what will hide, and just darker sides will show outside. Okay. Next from inside, it will be your goal to guide the empty balloon neck out through the hole. So I gotta basically do this. Well, yeah, it would make sense if I could blow it up afterward, after the fact. I guess that makes sense. Okay. So I put the ends of the balloons through the hole. Now blow. Okay. Close. All right. Uh, some of the letters on the inside of the strips, some of the letters were colored or so, but I can't see them anymore. Is this balloon specially treated that I can't see it? N T S T R H E. Oh, wait. Okay, once you do that, you have a sum of the hot air balloon as shown in the picture. Okay, where's the. Where's the card? Blowing is the next thing I mentioned with crossing strips on tightly in tension. No, not lose air. You'll clearly get to close the neck with a tightness knot. Yeah. Under good lighting, no time to wait. You'll read the numbers 1 through 8. Always look in and through the other side and keep your eyes open real wide. Dividing black bars with a special sauce to help you focus on what's horizontally across. Up, and up is up and down is down, and soon the code is quickly found. Okay, so here's one over here. Oh, gosh. A... RK green S T P P O like post there's a three a few moments later 
First three numbers in the postmark. Let me postmark within the Galapagos Island cards. Five three seven. So five three seven. Where's that at? Success. Stop timer. Two hours and thirty two minutes. <laughs> Well, in fact, act as a red filter in one of those layers that you find a code. Finals says down gently the excavation site from a distance in the shaft. When you see a man killing on the ground, as the sun he jumps up, stands on in the heavens, calls out ecstatically for someone named Miss Milestone. From a tent a little farther away, a young woman peeks her head out and flies, Nick, what's going on? Look at what I just uncovered. This could be the blade of a stone axe, thousands of years old, if you ask me. We should keep digging right here. You reach the pavilion at the same time as the young archaeologist. Somewhat surprised, she looks at you with a friendly expression. You smile and back and ask politely, Gemma. I may carefully remove the nine stickers from the cards and keep them as souvenirs. Well, if I didn't screw up that thing with the box and just went with a square as opposed to the other thing, just realized like, oh, I can't discover this. I need to go to the other one. That I probably would not have been here to begin with. So, that is my fault. Wait, wait, wait. But I do like th these type of games. It's just challenging. I'm just an idiot and I don't discover everything. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to edit this video way down, but it was two and a half hours doing this, trying to figure this all out. Hopefully I can get it done in under an hour. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll see you in the next one whenever I get one of these again. Sorry if this video is haphazard, but puzzles. Escape room. With that, I leave you with this.